Hi, hello everyone. Um, thanks for your time. Thanks for attending our this webinar. Um, so my name is Mirzad from Social Pita, and I'm here with my uh, another speaker with Elza from ASO Desk, right? Um, so uh, firstly, I'll give a little bit of like a background and an introduction of uh, today's webinar. Um, so we always uh, describe the mobile industry as uh, ever-changing, fast-paced, uh, like unpredictable, right? It's very fast-growing. And that these objectives are uh, especially true for the pandemic, like years behind us. And then the pandemic had a great influence on mobile marketing and its uh, consequences will remain like over the year by year. And then when it uh, comes to mobile marketing trends, we're not only talking about the humanity, but uh, tech development, like advanced, like advancement anymore, but also uh, talking about how are the new lifestyle or like a normal life uh, helped and shaped with the uh, mobile environment. And then what happened during the pandemic was a powerful push for the mobile industry, like a lot of advertisements, like, like join the party, and then and so on. Um, so uh, with, with that impact, and then for this reason, uh, the marketers need to make sure to approach customers with the right strategy to find them at the right place uh, and to help you, you know, like a better appearance for users growth in 2022. Um, Social Pita and with the iOS desk to host this webinar. And then we're going to share the, uh, actionable strategies to enable long lasting mobile app growing. Um, so I think first, um, Elza, you can go first to introduce, inter introduce a little bit about the iOS desk and uh, what you will bring us today. Unmute me. Thank you so much for introduction. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's get started. Hello, everyone. I will share with you my screen and my presentation. Uh, and uh, yep, it's here. I can share. Amazing. I think you can see my screen. I will maybe do it. I will hide these guys. And uh, I will make it maybe, yes, maybe like this. So uh, hello, everyone. My name is Elisa, and I'm happy to welcome all of you here. Today, I will tell you uh, why you need ASO and how to combine it with mobile ads. So who I am? Uh, I am a leader of customer success team. Oh, it's not. Okay. I am lead at customer success team at Asadesk. Uh, we provide our users with everything they need to bring the organic traffic to their apps. And uh, let's discuss our lecture plan. So we will talk about methods of app promotion in the mobile stores. We will discuss what is ASO and it tasks. How do you know if you need ASO and what results can you expect from ASO? So um, first of all, let's get started. Methods of app promotion. So in mobile app marketing, and um, there are different ways of uh, app promoting. But if we're talking about organic users, it is ASO. So if you, are, um, you can also, and you need, also made content marketing, social media marketing, but um, all of it influencing more on paid users. Organic users, it's about app store optimization. By the way, uh, I didn't tell it uh, in the beginning, I would like um, all of you to ask questions in the chat uh, after, we, um, you know, after our speeches, we will have uh, the Q&A section, but uh, anyway, and please, write some questions in the chat. So after I can answer and Mirzat also can answer your questions. So uh, why you need search traffic? Because maybe you think I have my paid traffic, it's great. But uh, according to Apple, 70% of users go to app, the app store to find the app they need. So if you're working only with paid traffic and you don't uh, like use Facebook ads, or maybe you uh, have great influencers who share your app, you can lose a big part of the market because 70% of users go to App Store to find the app. 65% uh, of traffic on the App Store is search traffic. So in the App Store, there are two uh, traffic. It's search traffic and browse traffic. If you know what, he, what it is, if you don't know what it is, please write in chat, I will explain you. Um, so 65%. Um, 
So you need to work with your ASO. 53% uh, of traffic on Google Play is search, tra search traffic. So one more time, if you are working only with advertisement, you lose almost the half of the market. And uh, the retention rate of organic users are 25% higher. So for example, here is the logic is very simple because uh, if you would like, if you see any ads during you scroll your Instagram or anything and you see the advertisement of maybe any game, I'm just like, hmm, maybe it's interesting, I will download it. You download it, but later you understand that it's not what I was thinking it is, or maybe I don't need it right now. But when the user, when your user, your client, uh, who will use your app and who will bring money to you, uh, think that, uh, okay, what I need, I need match for a game. So I will go to the store, download it, that um, the percent of retention will be higher when he's doing it this way, when he search your game in uh, the search, actually. So, this is why you need methods of app promotion. So app store optimization uh, consists of these steps. First, you need to build the semantic core. What uh, does it mean? The semantic core is the number of search phrases on which you want your users find you in the store. So for example, um, during our clients, we advise usually to have like 500 or to 1000 search phrases because uh, it really should be big because you don't know which phrase will work and uh, you always need to experiment a little bit with it. So then it's metadata creation. After you've created semantic core, you need to find the correct keywords which you will put and, uh, in your uh, name subtitle. Keywords, if we are talking about App Store and in your description, short description name, if we are talking about Google Play. Of course, you need to remember that uh, there are like um, not a lot of sy symbols, but um, syllables, but um, you need to combine them. So for example, for App Store, you don't need to use your keyword twice. For Google Play, of course, you have four a thousand uh, symbols in their mm, description. So you can use different uh, keywords and search phrases. Efficiency measurement. Of course, after this, when you, um, when you take your metadata to the store and you publish your app on the market, you need to wait at least like two weeks. If we're talking about Google Play, you need to wait like a month to understand uh, how the store uh, analyze your app and which keywords they give you on which keywords you have positions right now to understand the efficiency because sometimes uh, we like working with the third part we are working with market and um, we can't predict on which keywords they will um, show us to our users so that's why we always need to measure the efficiency working with iterations uh, ACO, it's not um, working like just I've done it one more time and it's working for my whole life or for the whole life of the application. You always need to work with iterations more and more. Sometimes it can be like uh, um, later I will tell you our research, but it should be at least usually six uh, different iterations, six different experiments with putting these keywords to subtitle or maybe putting these keywords to title or maybe uh, from uh, description to short description, or maybe from short description to title. So we can understand that these keywords are working and these keywords are not. And we will use them, not others. Uh, growth modeling. When you are an SEO specialist, you always need to, to understand that um, it's not only about uh, keywords, search phrases. You need to work uh, with your whole team, with your whole group, in marketing, for example, UA manager, for example, the content content uh, makers, and um, because you need to always to listen to them to have your growth model. For example, uh, you want to tell that you, if you are SEO specialist, that you want to um, change screenshots because of um, their um, conversion. You think that it's not okay, and your content maker can tell you that okay, it's Christmas time here. Maybe we can put something uh, in our screenshots to make the conversion higher. And your UN manager will tell, okay, okay, then I will uh, change the uh, advertisement. So I add some of um, Christmas stuff there, or maybe you want to uh, test any interesting keyword. So uh, you need to tell everyone who is uh, involved in marketing in your team, so you can work together, you can discuss uh, the experiments, the points of growth of your app 
with them to have this growth model for your application, how you will uh, increase the number of organic users coming to you, uh, and of course also paid. Everything is combined with connected with each other and competitive analysis. So actually this step, it's not like um, the step, it's um, the thing that should be always while you are working with your app promotion. Because right now the market uh, have, has a lot of big uh, applications, a lot of unicorns who are amazing, who've done, who like uh, existing for 10 years. Of course, they've done a lot of mistakes. Of course, they've done a lot of great stuff. So our advice is not to try and to create uh, something new. Just try to analyze them, uh, to look at their skis of success and understand what you can use in your uh, growth model. So you can uh, put it in your, for example, I don't know, if I will like tell a little bit uh, about competitive analysis uh, later more with examples uh, and conversion optimization. So all these steps, it's about um, it's about uh, bringing the traffic to so the users will see your application. But when they see your app, they need to download it. So first step to do everything uh, you can. So uh, to be in a lot of search phrases in the store, to be in high positions. But the second step is to convert uh, the user's um, page view or the user's impression to the download installation or anything. Uh, so this is about screenshots, about rating, about uh, users' feedback, and so on. So here, it's like the second step. Mm, and let's, it's like also about ASO, but it's a little bit connected with, not a little bit, it's actually connected with user acquisition. So it's the second step. So uh, we are talking like for 10 minutes about ASO, uh, but um, what it actually is. So App Store optimization is the continuous improvement of an app's visibility in stores, as well as a conversion from impressions of pages into installations for all traffic sources. So uh, ACO and usually ASO specialists, they are working with this. Uh, about, for example, um, in-app purchases, monetization, it's another, another person in the company, um, but ASO specialist working with this. So uh, what else make ASO important? Um, of course, right now, especially uh, like Mezat sa uh, said, um, after pandemic, we've got a lot of work. The number of apps, their influence on the market, on the whole world, it increased a lot. But anyway, uh, the bar, uh, like a lot of garbage appears there every day and quality apps in every niche are few. And if you have your app, you are sure that you have something unique in your app. You have the idea what your app bring to the market, why your application make the life of your users simpler or maybe more interesting if it is a game or why they should use your app. You understand this clearly. You understand that um, you need to work with everything. Like you need to work with all the steps your user come from seeing your app on the app store or seeing your app advertisement on the Facebook. And then after using the it, your app like for a year. So uh, ACO, it's the way to become noticed and compete with fever alternatives. Mm, and uh, what are the purposes? So uh, it one once again, uh, what ASO do and uh, what if you are ASO specialist, what you need to do. First, increase an app's visibility in searches. So your app users should find your app in the store. Your first and main aim is uh, to attract your users. And second, improve you to download conversion on the app page for all traffic sources. So for example, here we can find the situation like why you need to work um, together with your AI manager. Uh, sometimes we, okay, it's like really simple uh, example. Um, the app is fitness app. Uh, and they are just fitness app, uh, very healthy, a lot of um, things they you should do very easily, simple uh, exercises and everything like this. Um, and uh, on the App Store page, they've got like usual screenshots with um, uh, girls, boys who are quite sportive and they are doing the exercises. But on the Facebook ads, they've got the screenshots of old people who are walking, who are like uh, talking with each other. So 
the users think that this app is for old ones uh, and they maybe download it for their grandparents. But uh, when they go to the App Store page, they find that it is not like that, like, like this. So there are anything about old people, maybe special exercises. Um, and they just didn't do anything. So we have a really low, low conversion uh, from um, from from search trip, not from search, from uh, App Store, uh, App Store, uh, App Store paid traffic source, uh, low conversion. Uh, we find out why, and then uh, we increase it, and everything was okay. So uh, for all traffic source, this 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 is why you need. Uh, um, when you're working with SEO, you need improved beauty download conversions, not only for search uh, traffic source, but also for all of them. Uh, what does SEO promise in practice? So uh, ASO, it's not like everything you need, and it only promises you increase the number of downloads from the stores. So uh, if you're working with ASO, ASO you um, wouldn't increase in the number of downloads from advertisement, for example, and decrease in overall CPI. I can you understand? If you have more gaining downloads, of course, it will decrease the CPI of uh, paid traffic. Mm. ASO is not rocket science. It's a streamlined set of processing for gathering and processing data and drawing recent recommendations from the data. So, uh, Right now, we are talking that actually, even this is true, that, um, uh, and we want to tell you that uh, ASO is not the only thing you should do with your app. In today's realities, we need to use both paid and organic traffic to bring our app to the top. During working with ASO, you always need to have second plan because sometimes maybe these keywords would not work. Maybe you've done everything right, but the number of downloads didn't increase, so you need to delve into learning why. Uh, maybe it is screenshots, maybe it's reviews, maybe the keywords are not right. But um, by the way, you can always have consultation with me or with my team at Asadesk. We can like um, tell you it's uh, totally free uh, about your application, how uh, ASO of your app is going. Do you really need ASO or maybe uh, you need to switch to uh, paid traffic? And right now, uh, the purpose of textual optimization is to maximize search traffic for your application. Uh, new markets, it's always opportunities for growth. Uh, if your application uh, is not tied to a specific region, always find new markets because they always are opportunities for growth. Uh, so here, uh, you should work with both paid and organic traffic. Why? First, uh, when especially your app is new to the market, it is almost impossible to get visible by users uh, and get high positions. Right now, no. If you're like uh, just launch in the market and you wouldn't uh, spend money for advertisement, you wouldn't have high positions. Like it, it, it's almost impossible. Maybe you can have feature and uh, featured by Apple. Uh, and maybe you like, uh, I don't know, the game like pop, which is popular in the whole world. And when they have mobile version, of course they will have downloads without pay traffic. But if not, you need to think everything. A common creative funnel makes the price of purchase lower, of course, overall decrease of CPI and shared reporting. Um, tests. Remember about tests and experiments. It is always mm, like this. You need to experiment and you need to remember that you shouldn't stop after you first uh, done ACO. Competitive analysis. So here, one more time about competitive analysis. Uh, so here you can find the comparison table. So uh, the app have the situation like this. They were losing their positions. They were quite uh, not stable in the market, but they've done a so they've changed title, subtitle. It's the um, uh, App Store iOS application. And you see, they increased a lot. They have high positions on different keywords. So you can analyze it. You can understand what they've done, what, ch what changed in metadata they have, they had to understand why they have such growth. So right now we are going to this topic about uh, how to understand, uh, do you really need ASO? Because um, here is the proportion of paid and organic traffic sources. So for example, if we are talking about, um, let's talk about board, uh, you see it's almost 
um, organic browse or non-organic traffic. And organic search is only about 20%. So of course you will need it because 20% it can be a lot. But navigation, for example, it's 11%. So if your app is in this category, maybe you should pay your attention to organic browse and non-organic traffic. And let's check where is more non-organic. No, it's actually here in navigation. Uh, so it's uh, our researchers from Asadesk. Uh, proportion of paid and organic traffic sources in games. So if your app is a game, uh, you can understand that, um, let's check, non-organic traffic, uh, mostly in casino. So if you are uh, a casino app, you need to, to look at paid traffic because users, uh, actually it's like casino, it's uh, quite um, complicated stuff to discuss it, but if you cart cards, for example, also non-organic traffic. But if you are a sports category or you are educational game, it's almost organic traffic. So you need to do everything to bring the users to your app from search phrases. Uh, how do you know if, we, if you need ASO, game industry, iOS, by countries? So if you are working, for example, US country, of course, uh, especially with iOS, it's still um, the biggest market of iOS applications and it's uh, most um, and more uh, a lot of money in this um, uh, region. So work with uh, USA and Russia, Germany, France, Spain. Uh, it's you see non-branded search requests and branded search requests. So for example, USA, Russia, Germany, it's quite, but in Spain, for example, it is more than 61% of branded search uh, requests. Uh, how do you know? Um, so here we can discuss by categories the same. Mm, actually, well, we have this research in our blog, so you can uh, go and learn uh, about this a little bit more. I don't want to read all of this for you, so don't, don't waste your time. Uh, but using these tables, using these researches, you can understand how deeply you need to be involved in um, search traffic and also here is Apple search ads. Uh, it's uh, becoming more and more popular, especially after uh, 14 uh, and a half um, changes in uh, uh, iOS. So uh, here you can see uh, how ASA, uh, ASA popularity trend increase in all these uh, categories games. Uh, so uh, by category, app industry searches one more time. So here, uh, you can find, if, for example, you're working with clothes, uh, really a lot of uh, search traffic, mm, not brand search traffic. Like, for example, mm, if you are, mm, you want to work with clothes, but you are a no name, you need to understand that such guys as AliExpress, for example, Shein and all these mm, brands, they uh, have 92% of traffic, of brand traffic there. So you will, um, so you will understand that maybe you need to switch it to any other, any, not, not to any other. You need uh, to pay attention to maybe not search traffic, but maybe for paid traffic. Uh, the structure of search traffic, brand name queries. So we are talking a little bit about brands and here you can find for USA and UK market, uh, how many uh, average share of brand name traffic is 70%. So it's 70%, it's a lot. Uh, so remember that uh, search traffic is only 30% here. Uh, how do you know if you need ASO tendencies? So you see, we are talking about um, uh, that um, our, um, the uh, applications market, it is increasing. Uh, after a pandemic, of course, but in whole, we see a little bit of um, losing the um, organic traffic percent in the market. And right now, non-organic growth. It continues during these years. This is was uh, according yeah. Apps Fire. And uh, right now it's almost, uh, we are going to the end uh, of my presentation. Uh, what results can you expect from ASO? So, uh, before starting, ASO, it's important uh, to understand your situation correctly. First of all, uh, the effect of ASO will be close to zero if your app is just entering a highly competitive market and you, uh, and you plan to promote it only with ASO. Like, for example, clothes, one more time. You remember it's 92% of brand traffic there. So, of course, 8%, when we're talking about millions, it's a lot. 
But anyway, you need to remember that you can't reach the high positions only using ASO. And your app, a copy, your app copied from popular competitor. One more thing, which I was, uh, one more time. Uh, the thing uh, I was uh, talking in the beginning that you need to understand why users need your app, why they need especially your app, not like, I have an, an app and it's uh, beautiful. No, uh, it would be some uh, amazing, interesting features. Uh, and of course, your, all your team should answer this question, why our clients need our app, not competitor one. Uh, and ASO will be effective if you use other channels, develop branding, buy paid traffic, use in-app ads, as well as contextual, targeted and banner ads. So everything is working together. Uh, there is no budget for paid promotion, but you're conducting ASO for several countries at once. So if your budget is like limited, really limited, but you are sure that your app is perfect, uh, or the whole world needs to know about it, you need uh, to open it for many countries. Because sometimes uh, you can be featured by Apple, it will bring you traffic, and you will have like normal, not maybe uh, high positions for all of the keywords, but uh, here we can uh, help you uh, with um, our tool. Our tool can tell you the popularity of the keywords uh, and you can work not with the keywords who have like 1,000 users, 10,000 users per day, but with uh, the keywords which daily impression is like 100 of users or 200 of users. They are usually not very competitive and it's quite uh, okay to, it's quite easy to be the top, to go to the top on these keywords. And one more time, a little bit of budget you should have anyway, <laughs> because uh, it's all, it's really very uh, rare when the app uh, just uh, go to the store and everyone is downloading it without, uh, spending anything to the advertisement. And what result will ASO bring uh, to your app? Like we have this test, we have it uh, on our website, in our blog. Mm, so let's go through it with one example. Uh, is the app just entering the market? Yes, let it be the new app. Is the niche dominated by non-branded traffic? So you can go to our researchers and say, let it be non-branded traffic. No. Are you going to provide budget for advertising, advertising PR and paid traffic? Let's go with yes. Uh, if you have chosen the right ASO strategy, traffic and app installs will increase in one, three months after the start of optimization. So you see, here we will find uh, when you can expect the results from your app store optimization. Usually in two, three months. First months, it's uh, for the application which were in the market, but they didn't uh, do anything. Like they just have uh, fitness in title, in subtitle, great um, uh, exercise. Uh, and in keywords, like maybe not uh, very, really uh, little number of keywords. Then they will have the results and they have a lot of paid traffic. They will have results in the first month. But if uh, you are starting, um, you just launch your app, in the market, or uh, if you don't have a lot of paid traffic, you will see the results in two, three months, sometimes during six months. If you don't see any results during more than half a year, you need to go to uh, experts in your sphere so they can take a look at your application and tell why you don't have them, why anything is happening with your ASO, with your application, because sometimes uh, it should work, not sometimes. Sometimes maybe you are uh, not seeing your app from the uh, user's view. You just see it as a developer, as a marketing manager, but um, um, the specialist from any other company who are like uh, not in your, from the side, they can uh, have a new fresh ideas and they can bring your ASL to life. So uh, let's talk a little bit like five minutes. I have uh, about uh, what to expect in 2022. First one, uh, transition, transition to web purchases in UA. Uh, yes, of course, uh, right now we have like, not right now, from starting from February, March, uh, 2021, uh, you know, all these changes in the in Facebook advertisement and all the paid um, advertisement, of course they influence. And right now it's quite, um, 
no, it's not quite. Uh, right now, everyone is trying to make maybe new landing and uh, bring users to the landing after to the application. So um, we will live in these realities. So we just need to uh, use them. And here I want to switch to the third one, active development of ASA, uh, uh, Apple search ads uh, due to iOS uh, for 14.5 um, release. We will, uh, I'm sure that as uh, Apple search ads, it will uh, develop a lot during 2022. And of course, uh, it uh, number of games and app increased uh, because of the uh, pandemic, because of all this uh, stuff which was happened. Uh, so you have um, increased number of competition and you need, uh, uh, and in the not, and demand for uh, systematic work with reviews and reviews increased. One more time, when you're working, uh, you need to remember that you need to work with your customer reviews and uh, uh, with, with them, with their feedback, of course, always. They gives you the ideas of what to improve in your application, what maybe bugs you have, which you didn't find during the tests. So uh, pay attention to them, of course, sometimes in different companies, uh, there are maybe two teams who are working with ASO or and who are working with customer support. But sometimes everything is done by ASO specialist. Uh, and he is um, the man who is re responsible for the application uh, pro page view in the market. So that's why I remember about your reviews, about your featured reviews and the whole rating. Uh, and uh, mm, store uh, contesting lawsuits due to the high commission fees. It will uh, just, I think, get more and more uh, in 2022. And useful information. Uh, right now we have Black Friday till December 10 in Asadesk. So you can uh, come to us. Uh, we will have consultation. It's totally free and we will, you can uh, brew you can buy our tools, uh, reply to reviews tools, ASO tools, and um, page traffic uh, up to 40% off right now. Uh, and uh, our blog, we have a lot of interesting articles, ideas, tips, and news about ASO. Just uh, go to us and we will, you, I'm sure you will find um, uh, all the answers to your questions, but if not, write us and we will done a research or we will tell you uh, the answer. We have a suggest community in Slack, just join us. You can also go uh, to the questions, uh, to ask questions, and we will answer them. Uh, and our YouTube channel, we have webinars, we have uh, academy there, uh, how to work with uh, your application. And uh, yeah, questions, we will, I will answer them in the Q&A section. So I think um, I'm done. Thank you so much. I will check, check, check the chat. It's um, it's chat, chat. What what is chat? Uh, anything? Nothing. Is hi, hello. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much for attention. I hope you didn't um, tired of my talks. It was. I hope it was quite interesting. So I um, take um, take take turn to Mezat. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, sure. Um, thank, thank you, thank you, Alza, for for such a wonderful sharing. And uh, we all, I, I guess, like we all learned like how important ASO is, especially for the non-organic, uh, the traffic as well. Um, so of course, and then please, um, everyone, if you have any question, please leave it to the chat bar, and then Alza and I will be able to like answer your question in our Q and A section as well. Um, so uh, after Elza's like wonderful sharing of ASO, and I also would like to share our insights uh, based on our uh, ad intelligence platform as well. So uh, let me share my screen first. Um, here it goes. Yeah. Okay, um, so first I would like to give like a little bit introduction of myself. Um, so my name is Mirzad, Mirzad Gayret, and uh, I'm the uh, business development manager at Social Kita. Like we work with um, the global customers, clients as well. And then we have multiple uh, offices in globally. Um, and then we are the ad intelligence platform. And then before that here, I would like to like give a little bit about uh, 
what social PETA is, and then like how we can do the like this industrial insights, and then or I would say like what are the uh, data source of of ours. Also, that would be like make more sense like while I'm doing the uh, the whole uh, insights report, like the introduction, the sh sharing. Um, so the social PETA is an ad intelligence platform, and there was the aid of the uh, world largest advertising intelligence analysis tool. Uh, we social PETA's team, like uh, we gives you the perspective of mobile advertising data in global mobile markets. Uh, and then we collect advertising data by sampling in a global scale. We have currently uh, accumulated over 1 billion uh, pieces of uh, advertising data and updates up to a million pieces of advertising data on a daily basis. Uh, so it's a huge. And then uh, based on this uh, huge database, uh, we can gain an uh, insight into the overall trend of the advertising industry. And now we are able to provide to our global partners uh, ad creatives, costs, audience intelligence, advertisers, and app intelligence relevant, relevant data like app download and revenue as well. Um, so including today's uh, insights data source, it's all from our uh, ad intelligence platform. Um, so first, uh, let's go through the, uh, the other first topic about the overview of 2021 global global uh, mobile marketing advertiser uh, status, uh, how it goes like in past year, and then let's give a little bit of overview first. Um, so here, uh, as we can see in the chart here, uh, the the green one is the mobile game. The the I mean the blue one is mobile game. The green one is the uh, non gaming app, and as we can see the chart here. Um, and then also the, the, the yellow line here, yellow line here is the uh, month on month trend of mobile advertisers, uh, both, for, both for both gaming and then uh, non-gaming apps. And then uh, the chart can tell that, you know, like in here that we uh, see the first four months mobile app advertising maintain the uh, repeat growth with the global number of uh, active advertisers uh, raised in a new high over the uh, 93,000 in April 2021, increases of like 5.97% uh, over, over the month. And then there were uh, 19,000 mobile game advertising and uh, 7,000 uh, non-gaming app advertisers per month during the year. And then also, right? Um, and then also when we look at the other operation system and our uh, mobile advertisers, that we can see that uh, mobile game advertisers uh, accounted for about like 2.5, 2.5, 24%. And then up to like 1.64% over the year. Uh, percentage of operation system here in the down is that uh, that we can see that there were like more advertisers in Android and then uh, more ad creatives in Android as well, according for like nearly, I think, uh, 80%. And then I will say like, this is definitely the, actually the obvious impact of iOS uh, new, uh, the privacy policy as well uh, that uh, Elsa has mentioned earlier as well. And then we're really expecting how it goes in the next year. And then probably uh, Google also comes with the GID, right? So we're expecting that as well. See how the, all the marketing things goes with this uh, privacy policy. As it's it's giving the marketers a huge impact, so we're expecting how it goes in the future as well. But for now, what we can see is that uh, obviously for marketers, they're choosing that Android for the moment, as you know, like iOS new policy, and we'll we'll see how it goes. And then uh, for the uh, global ad advertisers by region, by territory. And then there were like uh, 23,000 mobile app advertisers worldwide, according to our data with Europe, North America, 
and Oceania being the uh, top three by number of mobile mobile app advertisers, which means like competition is very heavy there. And then overall, uh, North America had the most mobile game advertisers according for 18.7% of its total mobile app advertisers. Uh, the percentage of mobile game advertisers in mainland China, Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, and Japan, uh, also including uh, RK were respectively like 49%, uh, 46%, and 44%, uh, higher than the other territories. And then, like, especially for the um, CIS, I think. Uh, there was like 9,000 game advertisers and like 15,000 of non-gaming advertisers. If I'm not wrong, like I was, I was checking the data earlier as well, but uh, we didn't put the number here, but yeah, I think, I think that was the number. Um, and so uh, based on that, after we'll go through with the analysis of uh, the mobile markets worldwide, like by uh, mainly it will be in uh, mainland China, the US, and then the CIS region. Um, so here, uh, mobile games in mainland China. So great efforts were made in advertising, uh, money-making games with the uh, simple gameplays in mainland China, with more than half of the top 10 like trendy mobile game advertisers uh, being money-making games in 2021. So that, that, that was uh, the huge uh, trend, I think, that we can see, like everyone uh, is doing like all the like, currency, like market meaning games and all so on. And in terms of uh, mobile games in mainland China in 2021, there were like 3,800 active advertisers per month. And then with active uh, advertisers uh, increasing on a monthly basis and uh, reaching a new high of like 4,200 in August. They're like, I think I should put it here. Yeah, in, in April, August here as well. Um, oops, yeah. And then let's, let's take a look of the uh, non-gaming apps in mainland China. Um, so for the non-gaming apps, uh, more efforts were made in uh, advertising shopping and the real estate apps. Uh, in terms of non-gaming apps in mainland China in 2021, um, actually we can we can see in the chart that there were like 4,700 of uh, active advertisers per month, which active advertisers in like increasing from like February uh, and uh, surprisingly like 5,100 in. Uh, July and August. And also like there were like 2.2 million ad creatives per month in mainland China uh, with a new high of ad creatives in March, uh, followed by uh, steady and uh, the repeat increases like here we can see in the chart as well. Um, and after mainland China, let's go through the, uh, the US status of US. Um, so for the US, great efforts were made in advertising uh, casino games in the US market. I think that that was like uh, for several years, like casino games is very popular in the US as well. Uh, and so many top advertisers in the uh, US were published uh, by Chinese company as well. Now we can see like Chinese companies are developing really fast, especially in gaming and non-gaming. Like we can see like Chinese companies everywhere. And then the, the tech is <laughs> going really well. So, I think that's the, the, the new trend as well that we can really uh, take our attention for the uh, our mobile internet, uh, where are the our competitors and then how they growing and then how they promoting the product and so on. Um, and to go back to our topic that there were like uh, um, 12,600 active advertisers per month in the US in 2021 uh, with active advertisers, uh, just speaking at uh, 13,800 in April here that we can see in the chart as well. And then an average of nearly 6 million ad creatives per month makes the US is the one of the most, uh, uh, I'm 
I'm sorry. Uh, one of the most popular like uh, ad grid is like region uh, worldwide that we can really uh, take a look at that as well. Like I think we will go through that part as well like later on. And also for the non-gaming in the US. Uh, so for the non-gaming, there were like uh, news, reading and the shopping apps were having the great effort in US region as well. And in terms of non-gaming apps in 2021, there were like uh, 30,000, 30, 30 more, 30,000 more uh, active advertisers per month. And uh, with the peak of uh, 7, 37,000 active advertisers in April. Um, here that we can see in the chart as well. Um, the US saw an average of 8 million active ad, ad creatives per month and a peak of like 10 million ad creatives in April. And also, uh, I think. Uh, the other region that we're really looking to is uh, the CIS region as well. So, and then come across to the CIS region for mobile games. Uh, top mobile games advertisers are mainly uh, SLG and uh, shooter games in uh, CIS region as well that we can see like SLG first, like Racing Kingdom and on the top. And also we have a couple casual games like uh, Idol Arcs. But also for the, the rest that we can see like Mafia City, Sniper 3D, Sniper 3D and the Hero Wars like or like SLG shooters and RPG like more like heavy games for. Um, so and according to our data in 2021, the CSA sells an, an average of like 5,100 active advertisers per month and 3 million ad creatives per month. And also let's look at the non-gaming apps in uh, CSA region. Um, so for the non-gaming apps in CSA region is that Facebook made a great advertising efforts in CIS uh, with its total social media app, uh, Instagram topping the list and uh, the several relevant apps on the list as well, um, like Instagram Lite and so on. Uh, in terms of the non-gaming apps in CSA region in 2021, there were like 7,000 and 100 uh, active advertisers per month and then 2.3 million active uh, ad creators per month. Um, so that's we can see like with the data number that due to now. And also for the last part, like we will talk about the, the cost, um, you know, like the cost is a very important part as well when we are doing the promotion, of course, like besides our uh, uh, creative designing and also like how to manage your marketing costs, how to save your money uh, in terms of your marketing campaigns. Uh, so, well, let's, let's talk about the, how the uh, marketing cost goes like insights into the CPM, CPCs, and the CTR in Facebook worldwide. Um, so here actually we can see that global cost uh, career of uh, mobile games. The data are an average of all data collected from different countries, region, by social data, um, and then are for your information only because uh, the cost intelligence data is like really, uh, you know, for like, uh, we all like to keep, keep our attention to the, uh, the, the, the cost as well, but we can't really uh, to know what is the cost, but as the third part, third part like data providers, as we like, we're trying to help our marketers to achieve or like to understand how the market goes or how the cost goes like a worldwide. So like if you have any interest for the cost, cost intelligence, of course, like we're giving like some samples data here, but later on we can discuss more in detail as well, like for specific regions, specific game type and so on. So um, let's get back to our topic again. So uh, for the data here are average for all the data, uh, collected by, I think this for the global cost for the mobile games, it's the average type. Uh, I think we can just uh, roughly look at the, how the trend goes. So basically uh, CTR here, the green line, 
here is having the, the, the slight increases as well over the year. And then for the CPC, uh, it also has the average of like a one average of like a $1.31 and then up to like 9% over the year. And then also for the CPM on uh, customer million, uh, it has the average of uh, increases as well. And then up to like 30, 83% over the year. And then after that, uh, let's look, take a look of a global insight into advertising mobile games on Facebook worldwide. So here that we can see by the region, the US had the highest advertising cost uh, for mobile games. Sorry, with an uh, average CPM of uh, $4.16 and a CPC of like $3.71 uh, and CTR of like $2.0. 0.9%. And also we can see Australia, Iraq, uh, Japan, Canada, Germany, Hong Kong, China, UK, Singapore, and the Taiwan, China as well. And the ranking of top five countries uh, region by CP CPM were the uh, same as uh, last year. There weren't uh, the big change. And also the US also the, uh, the highest uh, highest overall advertising cost with the uh, over the year of increases over like 90% in CPM. Um, and the uh, global cost uh, currency of non-gaming apps, let's take a look. Data are also as the same as we mentioned, average data for the all collected from different countries in the region by social data. And then the trend are similar to gaming as well. Uh, CPC has the average of 0.32 and then up to 88%. CTR uh, an average of like 2.14% uh, up to like 7% uh, over the year. And also for the CPM, an average of like 4.09 uh, and then up to 71% over the year. Um, after that, let's take a look of the uh, global insights into advertising non-gaming apps on uh, Facebook World Wild. Uh, for the here in the chart, we can see that Australia in the top with the uh, CPM of like twenty-two point like twelve per, like dollars, and then also CPC for like one point like eighty-four dollars, and then CTR with the uh, three point sixty-six percent. And the second is US, third, Hong Kong, Taiwan, China, uh, Canada, Japan, Oroki, UK, Germany, and Macau. Um, so, so the advertising costs in Australia are, are the top. Um, and then also for the top countries region by CPM were Australia, the US, Hong Kong, and China, uh, and Canada. So that are the region actually uh, having a great impact over the year. And after that, uh, we would like to share like some or the uh, well performs like gaming and non gaming apps uh, during the year and then see how their uh, marketing strategies goes and what we can, uh, you know, like uh, to share their experience, to see their ad creators and their marketing strategy and so on. <clears throat> so, um, so top 10 games in Q3 uh, for, so for expected for the five, fifth game uh, here in 1945 Air Force, uh, all the other games on the list were published like by Chinese company, like as we mentioned earlier as well. Um, so great advertisers efforts were made in casino games. Uh, and then the top three games were all casino in Q3, quarter three, and then top one games is uh, Jackpot Worldwide uh, had nearly like 28,000 delegated ad creatives. And also, uh, let's take a look for the uh, one of the hot ad creatives for the mobile games, and then see like what are the uh, impacts that going here. So for the first first one we have here, uh, Mafia Mafia City, and then the ad creatives here duration for like uh, almost 
for a month. And then the publishing platform is uh, Edmob. Uh, and then here we will see the password to. Uh, uh, Now. So yes, so this ad, ad creatives actually it got it had the uh, the popularity of eight hundred more and estimated impression with the uh, one million like over the one million like within for a month. Um, so actually, like what we can see is that for the SLG games tend to use a story uh, story ad creatives to attract players. So actually with the more storyline scenario, so it actually gives uh, ad creators more plus. So actually it helps for the uh, marketers to making or designing their ad creators as well. And also here we have the uh, 1945 Air Force that we mentioned earlier, also with the, uh, within the four months of uh, pump and then the platform with the Mobilista. No, and the country, of course, like for the Mobilista, it's more like a, a East China region, like Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan, and the China region. Um, so let's take a look of the this this ad creatives here. Yes, um, so uh, for this ad creators, actually uh, what we can say that the real people plus gameplay is combined to get a high popularity. So we can see that popularity with the 700 more and estimated impression with like 1.1 million, like within a four months. So actually it has a really, really good uh, number with that. Sorry. Okay, um, so for the top 10 like non-gaming apps in 2021 quarter three. Um, so as we mentioned earlier, like there was like a news apps in the top as well here and then great advertiser effort were made uh, with the short video as TikTok. Uh, I, th I think <laughs> we, we don't have to say, but like during the pandemic, uh, TikTok, was the uh, the most popular app in worldwide, I guess. Uh, and also we have this uh, news apps as well. And also reading, shopping apps were having a great effort as well. Uh, and then for the creative tool apps were mostly on Android. Um, so let's let's take a look. So let's take a look for the ad creatives here by uh, TikTok. Um, so TikTok with a duration of like months and more and then platform with the AppyFit news. And then let's take a look. TikTok. Yeah, so this this ad creator is actually published in Brazil uh, with the popularity of like 996 estimated uh, impression with 4.3 million. So within a, with, within a two months, actually like 39 days, it has this uh, like impression. Actually, it's a very very good very good uh, uh, impact for the for the ad creators as well. Um, so for the tips here is that high quality UGS boosts the advertising of short video apps. And also we have here a file master with the 39 days of uh, duration. And then let's take a look for the creatives here. Nettoyer votre Android.
télécharger maintenant. So yeah, so here this advertiser with the estimated impression is 1.3 million. Popularity is over like 900. Uh, and for the tips here is that the directive reach target users by displaying the apps, uh, the major function. So we can just tell users like what this app can do and then with the very uh, direct, uh, direct way to understand to how, how to use it. So I think that that's, that's a good tip as well. And then here, um, so after we're sharing this uh, helpful creatives here that I also would like to share a little bit of like tips that how to make ad creatives more competitive. So we saw others, uh, some like some, some successful cases there. So for how to make a more competitive advertisers. The first tip that I can give you today here is that competitors advertiser strategy is very helpful uh, shortcut actually. Um, so how to, how to tell it that um, here in uh, ad creatives for game games and uh, of the same gender often share a high degree of similarity. Um, so uh, high quality ad creators of top games that have have been uh, provided efficient effectivity by markets um, can be used as a source a source of inspiration for advertising games of the uh, game genre in the new market. So here actually we can see that uh, three uh, screen three 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 uh, the uh screenshot here uh, for the three games like one is mafia game and then the state of survival and then the, this one uh i think i'm no i think yeah I'll, I'll i'll definitely check this later on but yeah um so actually three are also the slg game uh, rpg games uh with the uh High, higher similarity and then we can we, we we can also see that with the uh similar background they're all doing the same thing and then with a similar uh scenario that having actually a great impact by making the creatives actually so once again competitors advertiser strategy is very helpful um so we can learn from that as well And then beside that, how to maximize the impact of uh, good ad creatives. Um, so first, combine the various element, like for example, like what is going on, like for the colors, um, like interactive, real people, uh, comparison, playable, and so on in, in one ad creatives. And also um, like the trends here going is that the from image to video, and now is more like playable. So actually we say it's a trend, but also we have to keep this tree as well for, it, it really depends by the region and the country as well. Like for some regions, uh, probably depending on the device or network, uh, the image uh, at creatives is having the great, uh, the message as well, but also for the, some like other more popular region, like some uh, development country, they're probably uh, with the uh, better device and better network. So video and mobile, like playable ads, actually having a very great impact as well. And then select the uh, highly effective ad creatives from the uh, multiple on run ads and they optimize them to uh, reach a longer group of audience. Um, so here like three tips is that interactive, real scenario and solve problem in a story. So just, um, I think that that would be a really helpful tip, and then we can we can discuss on that like more in detail like after on as well. G fifty, oh seventy one, oh sixty seven, oh seventy one, 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 oh seventy one,
for the um, just just come up with my mind that for the solve problem in in a, in, in a story, actually this this is going really really fire like really really hot like editors uh, idea like recently for example like it's it comes with the uh, the really easy uh, solution like a really easy uh, problem but you know for the creative set you can see that it's very simple but you never can like solve it and then while you're watching the <clears throat> the creators you feel like oh this is too easy like I'll definitely fix it like for for, for a second so that that actually like inspiring people like to download the <laughs> download the game and then to try it like with with, with themselves as well so actually it, and that really working and then we can see that in our data that it has a really great impact as well uh, just just for a just just for a short tip just come up with my mind um and then so after that after all this uh long sharing and then our observation as uh, it meant to be right like so what what we're thinking for 2022 what we think is coming out coming out for 2022 and then what we've seen in past year 2021 and 2020 2020 <clears throat> um so here i said like ad creatives are growing more important but good creatives are um, hard to come by. <laughs> so here, actually, uh, I have listed for the uh, three main tips. Uh, for example, the first that ads has increased sharply, uh, the competition has uh, intensified. So that's what we've seen during the year. Um, the more advertisers come to the line, uh, the competition is very, uh, very intensified like during the year and then also uh, there's like a lot of successful successful cases but also we we can't deny that that there were like a lot of uh, companies were closed not a lot of games were uh failed but still we can see that there is like a huge opportunity during the year the pandemic is still going on the after pandemic and the pushing us more like uh the home-based working and then more like a mobile internet pushing uh, situation. So I think there is like still a huge opportunity, but we can never uh, we can we can never forget that there is also like a huge uh, competition as well because everyone everybody wants to be successful, right? And also the second thing is that the impact of Apple IDFA policy uh, on ad release having the great impact for the marketers as well. Actually, I'll say that's a trend. It's just a matter of time. It has to become like anyhow. Uh, so Apple doing it like since since this year, probably like we're expecting for the um, Google probably will be since next year, like for the G, uh, GAID. Um, so it's just a matter of time. Um, but we have to ready for that to have to solve our marketing strategy. Uh, if you don't have the... Uh, uh, the audience, audience, audience um, data, audience related data, uh, but still like there, there's like a lot of other solutions coming up. Um, and then uh, the Elsa shared like her thoughts regarding the ASO as well. And then for the ad creatives who are thinking that um, probably with the, you know, like a more Mm, I'll say like first class generation of the uh, creators, it will, be, it will be brings like more impact. Um, so I think that will be also a very important part as well. And then after that, uh, what we're saying is that the heavy game developers are attaching the importance to media buying. So the, this part is that actually uh, since before to now, like actually we can see that like more uh, advertisers were like more uh, ad creatives that were saying like we're more like uh, casual games or like hyper casual, but for the SLG and then heavy games like RPG, there were there were like a less ad creatives there. But what we can actually see during the year is that uh, there were like very successful stories, like successful games. Um, they were like publishing during the year, and then with the uh, very high. Uh, promoting strategy and then it, it 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 really it really brings them to the new new high and then I think that's the uh, that's the new trend as well. So we recommend everyone to try on that as well. 
Uh, and then besides that, yeah, I think that will be the whole the information that I would like to share today. Um, so once again, uh, based on the uh, social beta data, if you have like any topic that you're interested or any data that you're interested, feel free to leave a message that we are able to like answer you later on. And then also uh, for the uh, anything related questions, if you have, you can leave it in your like chart bar that we are able to answer with the LSA as well. Um, so once again, I think this is all for my presentation today. And then here will be like a little bit of like our uh, strategy partners in globally. And then we can we can share that later on as well. And then, yeah. So thank you so much for all. And then if there's any question, I think we'll bring to with Elsa and then answer the questions and then to have a little bit of discuss topic, I think. Thank you so much. It was really interesting, especially a lot of uh, great examples. Amazing. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, so right now we can, uh, I think, go to Q&A part. We have one question in chat. Uh, how does the proportion of ANR affect organics? How long will it take for organics to recover after the growth of the ANR? So here we are talking about uh, Google Play error. Yeah, when you open the game and uh, it can't load. So uh, what can I uh, say here that actually, um, of course it affects organics, but it's not like uh, affect organics in direct way. Uh, it's working as um, when you, uh, in Google Play, when you have uh, your app um, in Google Play, when uh, it collects retention to your app also. So if you have a lot of downloads, then an installation, it will, uh, decrease your positions that's all so uh, after you will have a lot of downloads and uh, retention not uh, uninstallations you will come back to your positions so uh, it pessimizes your positions uh, until uh, until users uh, didn't stop uh, uninstall your app so they need to download they need to uh, you need to get high retention to your app and then you will be able to uh, go go back to your high results that's all. That's all. Uh, Mizat, maybe you know anything about uh, ANR effect, how ANR affects organics? Because I think like that's all. It's only about, yeah, it's only about retention that Google Play um, just yeah. collect everything, all the details about your application, especially about the retention. Even if you know anything about incentivized traffic, why it is hard to use it in Google Play, the same uh, that uh, users download your app, then they uninstall your app. So uh, mm -hmm. it even pessimizes you in the search phrases. Uh, top. That's all. Uh, and we have uh, questions from uh, uh, which are I think that I will. So we can. I think, just, yeah. uh, I think there is like some question about the casual games as well. But also here, actually, we ha I have some questions on the Elsa. Like this was actually from the uh, registration question. So I'd like to uh, bring up with, with the, the audience as well. I think that that's like some interesting part as well. So here is the first question that says like how companies effectively since ASO and UA work, is there any like good practice on this that might be discussed? So do I you have I've any uh, I think I thought uh, during my part about the example of uh, when you need to remember that your creative set, which you use in when you are doing your advertisement, they should match uh, the screenshots, the video, the name, the title, uh, which users see in the store, or if it's Google mm -hmm. picture description. So everything should be matched. You can't work like uh, separately with your UA department, with your ASO department, everything should work together. When you do it like this, you will have everything correctly. Yeah, we have this question in chat. So good practice is to discuss with your colleagues um, all the strategies you would like to use uh, to have one theme in your screenshots, to have one uh, aim in your screenshots. Like for example, uh, right now we are testing the uh, exercises at home. So you think that this is the main feature of your application that you can uh, train at home, your body. Not, you don't need to go to gym during uh, all this stuff, for example. So just 
just uh, do this in Facebook ads, do this in your ASO uh, everywhere. Just uh, just talk with your colleagues and have one strategy. Uh, sure. And the there's like another question. Oh, sorry. I think that the second question is for you. I, I see them uh, in chat. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. Second question is about the, how to prepare your, your setup campaigns. And also there's like, uh, Vitaly, he's asking the same question as, uh, same, same question that I think, like to how do I keep in mind with the, the marketing creators video, right? Um, so for here, um, as an intelligence platform, like social media, um, our, I mean, my perspective will be based on uh, creatives and that advertising strategy uh, more like. Um, so first I will say establish our objective and then target the audience in very important, is the very important key point. Like for example, you know, uh, where to promote the country, region, you have to target that as well. Select the network channels uh, and uh, choosing the internet words, like the what internet interest words is the is, is very important. Like also with the ISO, I think. Um, and then with the uh, also advertising strategy is very important, like choosing the right platform to promote. Like for example, in that case, you probably want to promote in Google or probably want to promote in Facebook. But you have to understand uh, what are the you know like uh, top advertisers are going in the different platform and what type of uh, creatives type that more uh, efficient in these networks and uh, also like depends on the region and country as well. Uh, and also after that, I would say adjust marketing cost is very important. Um, you know, like, and also like attention to competitive advertising strategies, very, very, very helpful uh, shortcut, I will say. Because, you know, like, I don't know how to, I don't know what are the ad creatives that I should design for the region, but we, I can just check like what my competitors they're doing, what their, what, what their like marketing strategy. And then based on their marketing strategy, based on their marketing trends, and then based on their ad creatives, I can easily like inspire myself or inspire my team that, hey, you know, like we're doing the same game or we're doing the same app. And then that's how they're doing. And I think why, 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 why we can't learn from that, right? So I think that's a really good shortcut as well. And then of course, uh, identifying the type of uh, ad creatives is also important, like image, video, like uh, carousel, HTML, uh, which is the more suitable to your target region. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, like different region has different network, different devices uh, percentage as well. Um, and at last, um, designing of the ad creatives. Um, I would say um, how to design your ad creatives. Like, like I mentioned, like some elements on the text ad that you're using for your uh, ad creatives, uh, localization, you know, for example, like in Russia, in China, and in US, you probably have to design by the uh, different elements, different colors, even by the colors, actually. For example, maybe like in China, they're like a red, right? In the US, they probably prefer like blue or green or yellow kind of colors. So actually, it, 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 it brings some, some, some impact as well. Um, so I'll say that are the, some tips like from my perspective. <laughs> yes, I think they are totally correct for everything. Like you really need to learn from your competitors. And of course, uh, think about region where you are working. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like that, you're totally uh, correct. Uh, about Google then, Place oh, algorithm. We have some more questions, yeah. Uh, yes, about Google Play algorithm. Actually, we didn't see like it changed or anything has changed. It, um, it, it is the same. There is there wasn't how how it is this? drastically in the past few months. No, the same. Mm -hmm. uh, it just indexed your description. It gives you uh, positions according to the keywords you use in your description. Everything the same. Just Google Play is working. Uh, I can't say that it is working individually for any app, but actually. It is the same. We will never know how. Actually, we'll never know how Google Play will uh, index us in the market. Because, for example, in App Store, you have uh, 100 syllables in your keywords, and you know that if you put the keyword "taxi," for example, in your keyword set, you will have position for this keyword. But in Google Play, you can have um, the keyword "taxi," you can have "free taxi," you can have "fast taxi," and so on, or "taxi near your house," something like that and you wouldn't have position for these keywords oh, because just because Google Play thinks so. 
and that's all. That's why uh, with Google Play, it is more about experiments. But uh, in Google Play, if you have positions which you like, we advise not to do anything, especially with the, the description, because right now uh, it was uh, actually, it was changing in Google Play name. So we've got 50 syllables, like right now we have 30, only 30, it is, it's not a lot. Uh, so, so when we've done these changes with the name, and that's all, only the name, uh, we saw a lot of decrease in uh, search phrases, uh, in keywords, in our positions. So that's why if you have great positions in Google Play, it is better not to do anything if you don't have to. Like for example, if they have, now, of course, the new rules for your name, you have to change. But if not, it's better not to experiment with ASO uh, when you have a great result already. And uh, that's all. Wow, great. <laughs> I mean, I, I learned a lot. <laughs> Me too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, next question is that, uh, how to reduce the cost of user acquisition? Uh, I think I can share a little bit about this uh, as we also have the cost intelligence as well. Uh, and then actually, you know, like uh, for designing of that at Creatives and then choosing your platform, actually it really uh, helps you to uh, reduce or increase or optimize your uh, cost as well. So it really depends, uh, for example, the elements that you use, um, the, the, the long short or like a size of your ad creators, actually it really brings you impact of like how much cost that you're gonna you're going to spend for your marketing marketing and uh, marketing campaigns as well um so i would say like it really depends like uh, what elements that you use what platform that you choose and then by the region as well and the devices as well um so actually just just take take a look like what your competitors are doing <laughs> so i think um if, if if they're doing it, it incorrectly i think why don't you learn it, right? Like we just copy it, see, see how things goes. And then that's all the beginning. Um, and after on, like when things go more smooth, more success, and then like, obviously like that's our success as well. And then that's our mobile internet, right? Like we learn from each other. Yes, of course. I think that uh, if you want to reduce the cost of anything, you have like two ways. First, you can hire a person, for example, any user acquisition manager who have a lot of experience, and uh, of course he will know <laughs> how to uh, decrease the cost of um, you know, user acquisition. Or you can go to any like um, any company which are working with user acquisition, which are working with advertisement, like for example, Social Pizza, and they will help you with it. So uh, it's like I just think that it's impossible to have like one uh, advice which is working for everyone because. You're right, totally. It's different regions, it's different apps, it's different background of this app, this his history. Maybe it's like uh, the app which are working with the, in dating market. Dating market are a little bit crazy. They are so much money uh, there. So you uh, need to understand that you have you need to have budget. But if you're, for example, any match three games or any like farm games, of course, it will be easier for you to lower the cost of user acquisition. So just uh, go to the specialist and they will help you uh, because it's uh, unique for each application. That's all. Totally and uh, totally I think uh, the, uh, the last but not the least uh, methods of app promotion in App Store and Google Play. Uh, actually, I think it uh, should be another webinar because it's it's almost impossible to answer this question in uh, one or two, three words, uh, because, because there are different uh, paid promotion, uh, free, no, not free, like organic promotion. Uh, so you need to have to do ASO of your application after you need to do advertisement with your application. And after all of this, you need to have customer support uh, who will uh, get the, uh, the feedback from your users and will uh, change it to the, your new features or change it to the tasks to your developers so they can improve your application so the users will like it. So uh, methods of app promotion, there are a lot of like, there are Apple search ads, there are Facebook ads. You can go to the YouTube with the influencers. You can go to Instagram, you can use search phrases. So uh, I don't know, each application one more time is unique and you need to uh, talk with any specialist, with any marketing specialist who will uh, help you to promote your application. So I think that's all.
Yeah, that's that's a perfect <laughs> perfect answer, I think. Yeah, yeah. I can't think any more like that, but yeah, totally agree. Sure. Um I don't oh I think there's any more questions. No, I don't see any any other more questions here. Yes, me too. I think we've done. I think we've done. So yeah, would, would you would you like to give us a, like a quick conclusion and a quick wrap up <laughs> yeah. for the topic? <laughs> yes, I would like to have like um, one more time repeat that um right now uh, the app market is um, developing it is increasing it's a lot of applications it's a lot of new ideas are coming each day on the market uh, but um, uh, yeah repeat your email please please um, in the chat yeah uh, so you need to you need to understand that you need to build strategy for your application, the strategy for promotion, the strategy for developing it. And uh, uh, of course, if you have any questions, come to any company. For example, uh, we can, we, any uh, specialist can consult you. Maybe for any services you will have to pay, but consultations, they are usually free. So that's why just go to that person who knows a lot of this market, who can advise you what to do, and you will be sure that you are doing everything right. Because sometimes you really can work for a year, for, for half a year with your application, uh, and you will think that you are doing everything right, but nothing will work. So just come to any company like Social Peter, like Asadesk, and I will help you with ASO, with advertisement, and you will have a great results. I think just like that. And of course, just believe in you. <laughs> you will have the great results with your app. And we wish all of our attendees today a lot of downloads, paid and organic, of course. So uh, I think we've got uh, really interesting topics today. So thanks, uh, yeah. everyone, for watching, for listening, for your questions. Thank you. Thanks for everyone. Thanks for Elza for your such a wonderful voice. I love your voice. Thank and, you. Uh, it's such a wonderful sharing. Um, would you like to repeat your like email or contact address? Yes, of I yourself? think uh, I didn't have it, so I will type. Yeah, so if you have any questions, I just, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just leave my uh, email address there as well, like mirzat at zinfront.com. So if you have any questions regarding uh, ad creatives or any cost or app intelligence like related data or any any questions uh, we can feel free to contact just send me a message or just view our web so that will be a perfect starting yes so thanks everyone see you in our okay. next webinars keep in touch so goodbye sure. thank you everyone thanks for attending and then we'll definitely keep in touch thank you and thanks Elsa as well <laughs> Thank you too, Rizat. It was nice to listen to you today. Okay, have a good day. You too. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.